Hi all and welcome back to the Tech and Garage channel. Templar, the plucky Pentium 4 is back and is set up as my retro Linux box. My original goal was to restore my retro Linux box. However, I had some harebrained ideas, like to use my very first Linux distro, Linux Mandrake, then later Red Hat. Neither really worked out so well. All right, install is complete. I'm going to inject the disk from the drive. Then I tried Red Hat Linux. 7.3 while it worked it just didn't exactly feel right and we're back the something was wrong with the damn compact flash card so i yanked it out and put back in the original hard drive and after some fiddling with it i just i jammed a ati radeon don't remember what model doesn't really matter at this stage and we're going to install red hat linux instead because mandrix pain in the ass two thousand years later station finished while I had the nostalgia down, I very quickly realized that what I hated most about Red Hat was the package management really sucks. I'm not talking about yum or anything like that. This is back in the day when you had to hunt for RPMs themselves. Later on, Red Hat decided to change their focus to Enterprise Linux only and left the community version too the community. I have been through the upgrade rigmarole through Fedora Core and then later Fedora Core 4. To be honest, it was a complete disaster both times. I later on moved to Ubuntu, Debian, and their various derivatives, and since been much happier. This is Lubuntu 1804. The reason why is because I installed it back in late 2019 originally, when I first started shooting all these videos. I went ahead and more or less made it up like how my earlier Red Hat slash Fedora incarnations on this machine were previously done. Because of the lesser resources, such as the 2 gigs of RAM and the Pentium 4 CPU, this is going to be running the LXDE, or otherwise known as the Lightweight Desktop Environment. Hence, Lubuntu. It almost looks like Windows, huh? That's exactly what I was going for. Let me fire up my favorite file manager, X File Explorer, or XFE. This does not depend on any particular environment like KDE or GNOME. You can run it with some minimalist environment like, say, Blackbox or whatever suits you. OpenOffice was just barely a thing at the time. Rather, my first open source word processor was API Word. It's available for most platforms. Here, we'll just put some text in here. And I recall that one thing that really bugged me was the way it used to warp or wave text when you selected it like this. Thankfully, that's been resolved and it's pretty much indistinguishable from any other word processor that isn't Word. I'm not going to bother saving. Next up is Numeric, or Genumeric, or however you want to pronounce it. It's basically a spreadsheet application, not unlike Excel. A few numbers here, a little function there, and there you go. It's a spreadsheet. Bet those guys in the early 80s would have loved to have had this. Eh, I don't think I'm going to save this one either. Anyways, you have your menu here. Debian and Ubuntu make menu management much easier than Windows of the era. While I did install Chromium, 
it doesn't want to work on this Pentium 4. I haven't really investigated why, but it really doesn't matter since I have good old reliable Firefox. Of course, you'd be cranky too if you're running on a Pentium 4 with 2 gigs of RAM, trying to run 2022 era internet. Okay, let's tempt fate here and try to load YouTube. Here you go. Sped up, of course. And of course we don't talk about Bruno. Here, why don't we try something easy? Like, say, quadruple A battery. This to be expected, the audio and video are out of sync. Here, I'll go ahead and cancel this and close out of Firefox here. Pentium 4s are just not up to modern internet. Moving along, I've reopened XFE and I'm about to open QMMP with a random MP3. QMMP is a Winamp-like media player. It more or less replaces XMMS, which is no longer maintained. Please enjoy this random file from the YouTube Audio Library as a demonstration. The menu here is a little more simplified than Winamp. It does support skins from both incarnations, as well as a variety of other features. It's a shame I don't have any of the skins handy for this demonstration, though. Okay, enough of that. Okay, join us next time when we dive into some games. Be sure to leave me a like, a comment, and don't forget to subscribe.